Hello, welcome to my video about ballad number no. four uh, by Frédéric Chopin. His greatest ballad and definitely one of his greatest masterpieces that he ever composed. This piece, for me personally, um, is like a holy piece. Even though it's one of my favorite pieces uh, written by Chopin and favorite pieces of music of all composers, I, for a very long time, I refused to learn it myself. I didn't dare to learn it. I was thinking that I'm not ready to do it. I felt not ready. I didn't want to touch it. So I was only enjoying it as a listener listening to it many many times in many different recordings and enjoying the beauty of this music recently about two years ago i finally decided to learn this piece it took me quite a long time because this is a really demanding piece um, one of the most demanding pieces by chopin um, pianistically but also intellectually but I managed and I finally played it in public and I realized my dream. Now, today, I want to share with you, first of all, my love towards this music. And I want to do a kind of analysis so that it can be easier for you to absorb uh, the inner beauty uh, which is inside this music. Um, so let's just start from the beginning and see what is inside. The whole ballad starts with an introduction. And this is one of the most beautiful introductions, if not the most beautiful introduction ever written, definitely by, written by Chopin. Personally, I think that only Polonaise Fantasy, Opus 61, has a more beautiful introduction than this. More special and magic and innovative. Polonaise Fantasy. Of course, I'm, I'm sure you know it. Very famous opening. Here, let's just enjoy. Such a beauty, pure beauty. What it makes us feel. How does it make us feel? First of all, peaceful. We feel peace, we feel happiness. We feel like we are almost in heaven. We are happy and calm. And we don't want this state of mind to finish. I personally would love to listen to this beginning over and over and over again for hours. And that would make me the happiest person in the world. Um, this is extremely demanding for a pianist. Um, even though this, the beginning is written in C major, so this is the mother of all the keys, only white keys on the piano. Uh, no accidentals, only uh, like the most natural key. So Chopin starts from the most natural key, the mother of all the keys. This is a symbol and it's also very bright. So it brings us this peace and definitely uh, we want it to continue, but it, it won't. It doesn't continue. Everything changed afterwards. But let's first analyze this, this introduction. The demanding for a pianist. Why? Well, I personally practiced this introduction for weeks 
to make it the way I I see in the score. First of all, which is very interesting, we have two different um, dynamic marks in the same bar. One dynamic mark, which is like this and shows crescendo, which means uh, more and more loud, louder and louder, sorry. And another one is more and more silent at the same time. Crescendo and diminuendo at the same time. I show you this. This is one and this is another one. Crescendo, diminuendo. At the very same time. So well, is it possible? Yes, it is. Of course, because we have two hands. And uh, Chopin was a great pianist, so he knew that one hand can make a diminuendo, another hand can make a crescendo at the same time. But this needs to be practiced. So let's listen to this. Right hand placed at the beginning only one note repeated six seven eight nine ten ten times and it's the symbol of something being far away and slowly just like my hand now going closer and closer and closer and closer to us left hand has the opposite dynamic it starts from close and it goes away and now we have to do it together and we start from an extremely soft yes and then we go one then left hand comes and go and then finally we finally we see that this was just the dominance which means we take a deep breath so the beginning of this piece is like we take a deep breath. And finally we ex exhale. And then the second time. such a sincere fantastic music Chopin brings out the most beautiful parts of his soul the most beautiful parts of his heart wonderful unbelievable and unforgettable melody and music but it doesn't continue after this introduction we have something that completely doesn't fit deep sorrow deep sadness and now I want to stop and tell you a little bit about what I think uh, in general about this piece. If you know my videos about ballad number one, three, two and three, uh, you know that I focused more on telling you about the story inside this ballad, that the ballad is like a story that is a very literatic work and we have the, some kind of narrative story being told. Of course, and of course this ballad also has it. But in my opinion, this ballad is very different from all the other four. Of all the other three, sorry. It's different because it's much more ob subjective and much more personal. Which means Chopin is simply writing what he has inside, what he really feels. I feel such a sincerity, such a, in, an incredible um, way of expressing what is inside the artist who wrote this piece, that, that it's just shocking for me. If we listen to the first theme, and I now play for you the first theme, we, will, we must feel it, that this is exactly what the composer felt himself when he was composing it and not what he only wants to tell us as a story. Let's just listen to the first theme now and then let's analyze it. Because first theme is a dominant theme in this ballad.
This is the first team in its entirety. What do we feel? Well, we feel a terrible sadness and suffering. And why do we feel it? First of all, because of the melody, which is going around. It's like somebody moaning, somebody sick and very sad and maybe lonely. Second of all, because of the harmony, we have a lot of diminished chords. Um, and always diminished chords, starting from Bach and then all the other composers, they were used uh, for expressing uh, sorrow and very bad emotions. And here Chopin is exactly doing, because this, this chord, it makes us feel very bad. So that's why, listen again, the beginning, in here. for a little bit but even being in major we feel pain here and it's so on all the time all the time throughout the first team um, for me it's not a surprise that Chopin writes such a sincere piece this was written in 1842 and 1843 um, and this this period for Chopin was not a good period, um, mostly because two of his close, of, of people close to his heart died. And especially the, the death of the second one uh, was uh, a huge drama for Chopin. First, Wojciech Żywny. So first, the Chopin only piano teacher that he ever had. He died in Poland. For Chopin, it, he was not only a piano teacher, but also his friend. They were very, very close. And second was his dearest friend, friend uh, named Jan Matuszyński, a roommate with whom Chopin lived. He was talking Polish to him. He loved him with his all his heart. One of the closest person in his life. And he also died. And we know from letters that for Chopin it was um, um, it broke his heart, and he couldn't get over this huge loss. He got very depressed. And he, well, so for me this piece is a kind of auto therapy for Chopin. I mean, he just put away what he has inside. Of course he writes a ballad, so we have the story and I will talk about it later in this video. But when I play it, I feel what Chopin felt. I try to feel, I try to have the empathy because only then I can interpret this piece uh, well as well as possible. So let's analyze team one. Team one consists of two phrases. First phrase with this diminished chord. It's the same, the same short melody repeated. A second time. And then the second phrase we, is a very symmetric, uh, like in the poetry. Like in the ballad, we have the beginning of one, two, three, four, five, five short notes, tam, 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 tam. Then we have the repeated note, and then again, ta, 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 tam. So like a rim, like something that at the beginning is the same as at the end. Listen. La, ta, 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 ta. And only these two phrases we will have throughout all the team. So let's listen to it again. Phrase one, phrase two, and then phrase one, phrase two, 
Cristo. Phrase two, repeat it. Phrase one. Phrase two. Okay, and this is the end of the theme one. Now what happens? It should continue, it should be something else, we should have the development section, we should have the bridge, or we should have, I don't know, team, team 2, or some kind of uh, something else. Some kind of story continued. But no, we have first team repeated again, with a little change in the first phrase. And now uh, I want to uh, tell you what is one of... Uh, I want to show you one of the most important things which we will have in this ballad, and which I would like you to focus on. Team 1 will appear in the whole ballad five times. Five times. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Five times and every single time it will be different. It will have some kind of metamorphosis, some kind of change, uh, variations. Um, for me, when I was learning this ballad, when I was thinking about it, about the uh, the, the architecture, the form, the idea, the philosophy of the piece. It was like a symbol of a person, or a bipolar person, or a person who has uh, mental problems, say psychic, has problems um, with, his, um, with his mind, with his personality. The person who has five different personalities, or at least four, because the second time when the team um, appears, is only slightly different. We will have only a little psychic problems in this person. Let's, I want you, and now I will not go through, uh, I mean, I will not play it through, but I will skip the parts which are not first team, and I will only show you first teams. So we will hear five, fa well, four, because one we already know. Uh, so four more first teams. The first team which comes immediately after, I mean the second time when it comes, immediately after the first time, is almost the same, except of one change in the first phrase, at the end of the first phrase. Let's listen. And now it should be repeated, but instead we have... This is the only change, and then everything the same. This is the end. Okay, now the, there is something else. I will talk about it later. And then we have the first theme for the third time. And what is different? The melody is exactly the same as it was in the first time. But there is something under the melody. A new melody. Some kind of polyphonic. And also the harmony is much richer. Let's listen to this in its entirety. the drama. 
it builds up the tension and it brings out quite a big uh, climax and a drama. Um, let's, uh, let's focus on this, this theme now and let's analyze it. What we hear, except the melody we already know, is another melody and this melody has a kind of very fast breathing, like uh, 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 all the time and some kind of in quietness. It makes us feel a little in quiet. Let's listen. And now... And so on. This is what we hear under. But what is absolutely unbelievable is what is happening in the harmonies. Well, here in these videos I decided not to talk about musical terms, about harmonies, about things that um, a music lover who is not a musician would never understand. So I will not. But what I will do is I will play this whole first theme now for you in an extreme slow tempo. And I want you to close your eyes and I want you to absorb all the harmonies. Harmonies means the, all the notes which sounds together. And I want you to digest them uh, using your soul. I want you to really feel the tension and feel how innovative and absolutely wonderful uh, this part harmonically is. Chopin is simply looking for new ways to compose. He is experimenting and he writes a genius music. Let's just listen and I play it very slow. absolutely incredible moment so okay then we again we have some other music but we talk about it later and let's analyze the fourth time when the theme one appears we will have fugato which means we have polyphony like in Bach music we will have three voices uh, singing the same melody uh, one after another Let's listen. This will be the first phrase sing by, sung by three voices. Two voices now. Then now one voice. Second. Third. Only one 
one voice less stays. the last time when the first team appears it's a fantastically written a variation of the melody written with fast notes and just um, getting around the main melody so instead of having this we have this and now Let's listen together. And now instead of we have and again in the in major. Instead of this, and then we have this. It's, it's 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 getting richer 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 we will talk about it so this was the first thing i wanted you to focus on you can listen to this ballad and try to find five uh, teams but please remember that number one and two are exactly next to each other there is nothing in between them and then number four and five four and five also but four and five are quite easy to differentiate because as you've heard just now number five is very different okay let's go back now so what do we know already we know we have a fantastic introduction and then so and then we come we, we fall down from heaven to earth and we feel chopin suffering we feel somebody very very sad and we feel the first the, the first team two times what happens next we have a kind of bridge, a short bridge, which a little bit brings us back to the introduction. The same note. Here, let's listen, we will have this. bridge finished and we will have uh, parts of the first theme but only parts of the second phrase of first theme so this ta 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 tam pam 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 ta 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 tam but just mind you that we will build the tension listen and second type music the dialogue of two voices <laughs> okay now let's see did you hear the dialogue if you listen carefully maybe yes but I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't really listen to this dialogue so now I will show you uh, it happens in the right hand First voice. And second voice, which is in the bottom, uh, sings. So 
It's very similar melody played a little later. Let's listen. Two voices. And now... And now in the bottom. And in the, in the, on the top. And on the bottom. And both. Listen together. again to the uh, the second phrase of the first theme first time second time and third time and then stop we are we, we reached the climax with only one note the symbol of being alone and then Well, but where is the second theme? <laughs> Nowhere. Nowhere to be found. Instead, we have the first theme for the third time, which we already know. And it will bring us to the huge climax, finally. we will have the bridge which will finally uh, bring us to the second theme. Uh, this bridge is very often played too fast. Here Chopin writes in tempo and after three bars he writes accelerando which means faster faster faster. Usually pianists play this bridge immediately faster probably because they want to show off the technique. There are many places like this in this ballad and I will focus on it also in this video uh, because my interpretation is is different. Um, I must tell you now, because this is quite personal, but I think might be interesting for you, that uh, for me it was a really sh real shock when I started to learn the piece and I finally saw with my eyes and my brain what Chopin wrote in the score. Because 99% of pianists, uh, well, unfortunately I would say, doesn't follow what Chopin wrote. <sighs> Why? I have no idea. I have only one theory on this. My theory is competitions, competitions, competitions. <sighs> they are important and of course, but they also make sometimes <sighs> a lot of harm to the piece. Because <sighs> if if the young pianist want to play this piece in the competition, if and if he decided to follow exactly what Chopin wrote, which means play in tempo, which doesn't mean play faster, play in tempo, because of 99% of pianists and recordings we know, he sounds like he doesn't have a technique to play it, or he sounds like he's too slow. We feel, oh, why he does he plays so slow? But we don't know that actually Chopin wrote it in the score. This is a problem. So the pianist wants to show that he has skills to play it fast. The problem is that Chopin didn't like it himself. I have a proof for this, and I, I want to show you. Of course, the proof is not exactly about this piece, but it's about the piece with Opus 53, Polonaise in A flat major, the piece which was written, was being composed exactly at the same time as was composed this ballad. And Chopin, well, Chopin said, because it's the quotation taken from uh, Mr. Halle, Sir Charles Halle, with the book, his this is these are his letters, uh, published in London in 18, 
1896. And Sir Charles Halle writes as follows about the Polonaise Opus 53. I remember, and I quote now, I remember how on one occasion, in his gentle way, Chopin laid his hand upon my shoulder, saying how unhappy he felt because he had heard his grand Polonaise in A flat played fast, thereby destroying all the grandeur, the majesty of this noble inspiration. Chopin felt sad because somebody played fast. Does it mean Chopin didn't play fast? Well, of course it doesn't. Of course Chopin played fast, but he played fast when he wanted, when he needed, when the music needs it. In this ballad, I in generally, uh, this ballad is played is being played too fast and in my opinion it destroys the ho the whole message which is inside this ballad so my interpretation is different and definitely I will show you in this video also and soon I'm going to record all the ballads so that then you can you can listen to it. I hope you agree with me, but you don't have to, of course. You can be used to many recordings and, as I say, they are fast. So this bridge, uh, for, uh, which brings us to second theme, is building like, it's like waves. We have one wave, second wave, third, fourth. From here we have a cerrando, which we go faster. We go down and then we have the continue. We have the, uh, the second theme starting. Let's play this bridge again. And I play it in the tempo, which I think Chopin, well, he wrote it here. So starting from this, excuse me, and now. the second team let's listen Here we have pure beauty. Here we have another person. Uh, maybe love. Maybe somebody. Maybe the memory of somebody who we loved or who Chopin loved. Definitely we feel very calm and it's a major key. So we feel okay. We feel bright. Uh, we feel happy. We feel simply happy. And here we have the typical ballad, which we know already from... On six and short, long, short, long, short, long. Or number three, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. And this is 
is the first verse. Look at the second verse. At first verse again. And second. Very simple melody. Okay, and what follows now, again, is very often played too fast. It says, it says here, a tempo, which means in the same tempo. In the same tempo that we had... One, two, three, four, five, six. And now I will show you how well, if I play it in tempo, it's a, it's a completely different music. It, it lets us really hear all the details and the beauty which is inside this. I don't think Chopin wanted it faster. Let's just listen. One, two, three, four, five, six. at the introduction we are back we are happy again this beautiful introduction so we arrive to the beginning of the piece well let's analyze this moment first of all I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure you are a little shocked when I play it like this if you are a musician you think oh is he practicing or what is he doing here usually we hear it faster usually we hear <laughs> And here pianists are playing, rushing, rushing, playing faster, showing the, the, the abilities, the skills, the technique. Okay, wonderful, fantastic, beautiful. But is it really what is the essence of this music? I don't think so. I must say, uh, of course, you, can, you, you, you don't have to agree with me, but this is just my personal well point of view and also what I see in the score is that it should stay in the same tempo and here is the problem as I told you if I go to a competition for example well thanks God I will never go again but if I do I play it like this I have no chance because I'm compared to all the other pianists and second of all nobody plays like this so usually the jurors will say oh what he's he's so strange why he plays like this you will ask me, they should know that Chopin wrote it in this tempo. Yes, they should. But, well, maybe they know, but maybe they are used to, or maybe they have a different um, interpretation, because they think, oh, it should be slower. Chopin was not correct. Well, this is something I hate. Chopin was wrong. Chopin was not wrong, because Chopin, if he wanted, he would write a Celerando. He doesn't. He writes in a tempo here. Okay, so let's analyze it now. We have this is a fantastic moment, and we need a slow tempo to really hear it. This is we we want to reach the top, but we cannot reach the top for the first two times. First time, second time, and finally the first time. the top and from the top we will have a beautiful dialogue of two people 
and written in such a fantastic way. Listen. If it's play fast, you will never hear it. Let's listen. The first voice. The second voice. And voices together. Isn't it wonderful? They 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 sing. One stops, another sings. Then the other stops. One sings. Wonderful. Let's listen. N didn't happen. Didn't finally. And then the dialogue. Again, the same thing, a little different key. And now we have the dialogue continued. And from here they are dancing like a waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Beautiful walls there, that are so happy. And from this moment, Chopin wants to, he already plans to come back to the beginning of the piece. But first, he shows us a little bit of first theme, the second phrase, ta -ta 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 -ta. just listen, here, and left hand, right, and here we first, it's the first time when we hear that probably we are approaching the beginning of the piece. This is the same. So and in the left hand also from the the the, the first team. We are in a different key, but we hear the beginning again. And here it should be. should be but it's not exactly instead Chopin gives us time time to really uh, enjoy this beautiful feeling let's just listen and this is a very important moment now we are enjoying the beauty of this This you should remember because after that we are we will have the fourth time of the, the, the team number one the fourth time and then immediately the fifth time do you remember the fourth time it was a fugato it was a bach like a bach so now let's let's play it we have voices now first voice Second, third, first, second, third, Now 
here is the fifth time which we already know but I, here I want to stop and also tell you this is another um, part of the ballad which is generally played way too fast there is nothing written by Chopin here about changing the tempo only at the end of the whole theme we have Accelerando written by Chopin which for me means that before he doesn't want it faster and now question if you know the ballad if you know the recordings have you heard somebody played in tempo which means in the same tempo as we had because I don't know really such recordings let's just uh, well I want to play it for you like like the original like like in my opinion should be played uh, what Chopin is telling us, please play in the same tempo. Um, the same tempo means... So now let's listen how it sounds in this tempo. And believe me, try to agree that um, we feel very so something deep when we play it like this. Will you play it much faster? I can show you also play it faster, but you can listen yourself also. We only hear the showing off of the piano technique, which is not the essence of this ballad, in my opinion. Let's listen. here of course we have a charando so we go faster in my opinion we feel a desperation here we feel at the same time not rushing not running but we feel a deep sorrow the deepest sorrow which we, we have a lot of chromaticism and we need time to absorb it now let's play it faster and let's see usually we hear it like this but I think Immediately, we, without any bridge, we approached uh, team number two. Finally, for the second time. So team number two will appear in this ballad only two times. Second time, um, the melody will be the same, the accompaniment is changing. We have waves in the accompaniment, very beautiful accompaniment. <laughs> It's faster, but also Chopin repeats in tempo. So we should not play it faster. We should enjoy the second theme like we had at the beginning. 
and he will have the same melody but what will happen let just listen this time the second team will be building up the tension and something terrible will happen it will bring us to the biggest drama and the biggest tragedy of this ballad and of something that's going on inside Chopin's heart such a desperation such a, r a rage such a frustration and anger that I feel Chopin almost banging piano with his fists uh, like in the 20th century music you know like this at the end of this culmination of course he couldn't write this in the 19th century but he wrote almost a similar climax which is so devastating and shocking for us nobody when listens to the first time this ballad nobody expects the second theme to end in such a disaster it's like a total rage and desperation and death maybe let's listen let's enjoy the second theme now because later we will not anymore <laughs> We reach the Chopin just banging the piano like wild, like he is absolutely insane. Um, terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, well, the way we reached it, as I said, as, as you've heard, we, we come something, we don't want this to come closer, but it comes closer. We have waves up and down and up and down like water right so we, these waves will bring us this drama <laughs> times boom 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 it is exactly same ending like the ending of revolutionary etudes we have but here is the end of the piece this is not the end of the piece even though it happened in my concert that somebody clapped here if if somebody doesn't know the piece it is easy to clap here <laughs> Well, the pianist has to stay with his hands because otherwise people will clap anyway <sighs> huge drama we don't need words to describe it after this we have 
Well, Chopin is again ecstatic. We are in such a deep shock that we need time. And we are in heaven. <sighs> Silence. No movement. And it could be the end of the piece, even though it would be rather not so spectacular. So instead, Chopin is writing a coda. Coda, uh, so the end of the piece, where we will hear, well, we will hear a big mess. If, again, if it's played too fast, it's too messy. We don't understand what is going on. Again, Chopin is not writing here, play it faster. But in this, in this one case, I think, I would agree to play it a little faster because to play it in exactly the same tempo as the beginning would be way too, uh, too slow. To have this uh, ending, ending spirit, we let's say. And usually the tradition says that the ending, that when we have a lot of notes here and it, it is, it's a coda, it should be played faster. So probably Chopin thought that uh, everybody will know <laughs> anyway. Um, but still not too fast, because then we lose all these tensions. Here what we have, what the image we have, we really have the image of fight. Many people fighting or somebody trying to escape. Well, later, in the second part, because this coda has three parts. Uh, the first part is just a fight. Maybe fight with the fate, maybe we don't know. The second part is somebody who is Maybe in the water he's going up and try to escape or somebody who is trying to escape, but another person or the fate is just putting him down again. Then he again goes up, then putting him down again. And after this part, we will have the final part when we will just uh, reach the final climax simple by a very virtuoso part, very fast parts. So let's listen to Coda in its entirety. Three parts and fight. <laughs> the second part, this up and then fade down. And then fade down. And now part three. This coda, if I play it slower, I want to play it slower for you because this is the only chance when you can actually hear it slower. Just to feel the tensions that Chopin creates here, uh, the suspensions all the time. scales means a huge suffering Sun. 
somebody is bringing us with the, like a kind of uh, a kind of statement. No, this is a statement. No, this is a and again. fantastically written waves with uh, suspensions again suspension means the note which is waiting for the next note listen i show you Chopin is writing it on purpose. He wants us to have this feeling of waiting. So well, that's it. Of course, we can talk, analyze and play this ballad for hours, but I think uh, it must be time to say goodbye. And now it's time to say goodbye and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, uh, with this video I finished my another project of videos about all the balladas and well, now I hope I can prepare something else by Chopin. Thank you for watching and thank you for being with me. Please share the video to everybody you think would be interested in that. And well, see you soon in the future on my next videos. Bye bye.